Hey up troops, it's a little ten here again with another video, and this time we're gonna look at how to play Solus. In my opinion, Solus is the first operator in Siege who can be both a roamer and an anchor and be good at doing both jobs. In this video, we're gonna go over how to do both of those jobs, and I'm also gonna include some gameplay clips where I've played Solus, and just by the absolute chance, when I was recording the gameplay clips in, uh, in casual, I managed to get a 1v4 using Solus how she's supposed to be used. So we'll stick that in at the beginning and then we'll get in how to play it. So yeah, let's get started with some quick play clips on how to play Solis or how I play her in-game and then we'll get into the sort of nitty gritty and, and break it down a little. But that's enough waffling. Let's get stuck into it. Okay, this side. Oh, we've got one somewhere. Where is it? Oh, that's below. That outside. Drone destroyed. Boom. Any NCC? Oh, see it. I uh, got one over there, one through here. Yeah, yeah. He's on down the other side. Let's just chill here a second. See if he drones us out or not. Window He's gonna try and fuse above, so hopefully he gets distracted. He's getting the hatch. Alright, fuse. Alright, we got K there, so we know we're safe that way. That's someone on their phone below. I'm fucked up. Solace is so, so good. That's a really good example of how you can play Solace on different floors. Oh, there's an enemy. There we go. Get on Solace. So good, man. Sounds like they're just going straight to the side. That's someone's phone outside. Let's open this hatch. And then get a view on the window. There's someone in towers, I think. I'm not sure what the breach of that hard breach charge. This is not ideal. I think we can see. I imagine they'll just plant the whole towers here. Oh, there's. Now we can see the planter, here. Eh? Off plant. Back on plant. Now, all those walls are soft. I think they're in bathroom now. Pushing down. Get in, 1v4 up the Solis. Right then, just for a change, let's get started with Solis's loadout. However, before we do, I want to bring your attention to something. Mr. Pox and Locks has now got a charm. He is an American content creator who's a great Siege player. He's a fantastic bloke. He basically does what I does, but much better than me. Um, he's better looking than me, he's younger than me, and he's certainly got more hair than me. But his logo looks quality, it looks good on all the guns. All you've got to do is link your Twitch and your Ubisoft account. Sub to him on Twitch and you get this charm for free forever. Um, you've only got to sub to him once and then you get it for the remainder of your time on Siege. But yeah, he's a fantastic bloke. So if you don't already watch him, go and watch his content because, like I say, it's a bit like what I do, but much better than what I do. He's a better player than me. So yeah, go and have a look, but definitely support your, your content creators if you can by getting the charm because it definitely helps them out. And also the charm looks class. So there you go. Okay, so back to the loadout. I, I, personally, this is one of the easiest ones for me. I don't think there's there's much to discuss here, really, unless you're a big fan of the ITA, but I'm yet to meet anyone who is a big fan of the ITA. She's got the P90, the ITA, as we've said, the SMG-11, impacts, and the bulletproof camera. 
Now, the P90 is actually a really, really good gun in Siege. It's a literal laser. It's got 50 rounds. The damage is low, but the, the fire rate is high, which counters that. But no one really spoke about the P90 before because it was only Doc and Rook that had it, and they had the MP5, which was arguably better. However, when you think about it, the P90 is actually a decent gun. Um, like I say, recoils barely anything, um, and it's is really solid with 50 rounds especially. Now, the only reason to take the ITA for me is if you're anchoring on site and you need to make rotates and lines of sight. However, she comes with impacts, which is really helpful for that. So normally I would say, oh, you need to take, if you're playing mute, for example, you take the shotgun because you want to make lines of sight and rotates or smoke. Well, you've got the impacts for that here as well. So I don't even, I don't think there's any argument to take the shotgun unless you're just absolutely in love with the ITA. You don't get much choice on the, the secondary, but that's not a bad thing because it's probably the best secondary in the game. Uh, and then you've got impacts or bulletproof, depending on the sight. If you're making rotates or if you're roaming, especially take impacts because you're going to be able to make new lines of sights and open hatches and whatnot for you to get away if you need to. The bulletproof, if the team needs a bulletproof, you've got one there. It wouldn't be my go-to as standard. I think other, op <coughs> excuse me, other operators uh, could take a bulletproof, but if it's only you that's got the option for one, you need one, then take it. But for me, P90, SMG11, and impacts. Getting started with the basics of Solis, then Solis has access to the Spec IO Electro Sensor, or as we're just going to call it, a scanner going forward, because I'm not saying Spec IO Electro Sensor for the rest of the video. As you can see, we've got Nomad's very kindly stood here in statue, and we've got a drone and an air jab there. So, this scanner has a field of view, which is roughly what you can see in the image there, that inner sort of rectangle shape. And as you run around the map, you can sprint, you can't use weapons, you can throw impacts, and you can't... Let me put it back on a second, you can reinforce... You just can't use weapons. Now, this sensor lasts for 20 seconds. If we just wait that, for that to charge up on the bottom right-hand side of the screen, you can see that the bar, once the bar's filled, you're going to get 20 seconds. Now, once you're in the scanner, you don't have to look at the bottom right-hand side of the screen. If you can see the top of the scanner, like at the top of the screen at the minute, you can see that bar depleting. That matches up with the set the, the bar at the bottom right-hand side. Now, the range of this scanner is 15 meters, so you can see Nomads on the on the, on the a drone at the minute. You can see these three bits of, of gadgetry or utility that we can see here. Now, if we ping that drone and we move all the way back, this room is exactly 15 meters. You can see we're just outside of the range of 15 meters on that drone, and we just step inside the range of 15 meters. So, as you can see, we're just out of the range of the air jab and the, the, the drone there. If we give it a second to come back on, we'll see that we'll step just back in the range there within 15 meters. So, you're only going to see things for 15 meters. However, there is something else that you can do with this sensor before we move on. So, as we go come down the cooldown period, we go back onto the sensor. You see that field of view? You see how the, we can see that there's something there, but we can't see it because we're not... I mean, that'll be better. You can see there's something there. It's got to be in that range of the scanner for us to be able to tell what it is, to get an idea of what it is. Much like Iona's um, clone uh, cooldown period, if you don't deplete the sensor right to the very bottom, the cooldown period is less. If you come off your sensor before it's finished, the cooldown period is much faster. So don't stay on it for any longer than you need to. Now, that's the basics. The other thing that she can do is also ping things using that field of view. However, it will completely deplete the sensor um, like usage bar. So you can see there, hold F to scan. Now watch the sensor bar in the bottom right. If we do scan, it pings everything but it completely gets rid of that, the um, ability to use the sensor whilst the cooldown period goes on, if you know what I mean. So you, the pinging is really useful because you can show enemies, you can red ping things, but it gets you off your sensor straight away. So you've got to make a decision there. What's more important, staying on the sensor or red pinging things? Now, just straight away, I want to get rid of a misconception that people think that Solis can just run around and see drones all the time. Nomad's currently on her drone, as you can see at the minute. If Nomad gets off her drone like this, we go back into the sensor, we can't see the drone. We can only see active gadgets. If Nomad gets back on the drone, the drone now becomes active, and so does the phone, obviously, with Nomad being on there. The air jab is always active, so that's always going to be the case. But she comes off the drone, and we can't see it anymore. So you can't just run around shooting drones all the time. Now, a quick tip if you're playing against Solis is if you're taking your drone in the map and you know there's a Solis there, don't stand on, don't sit on the drone. You know you can scroll through the drones. If you've got your drone in a really good spot, let's just say you've got your drone up here to watch a flank. If you're, and you've got it in there, in the map, in the prep phase, come off the drone. Don't sit on the drone because as Solis is running around, if that drone's not active, she's not going to see it up there. So if you've got your drone in a good spot early doors, come off the drone to make sure it's not active and then Solis isn't going to see it. It's going to be like this. So just to reiterate my point about the active drones, we're going to play a little mini game. Oh, I'm so fun. In we go into um, into Astro here. Can you see the drone? I mean, I think it's fairly obvious because I know where it is, but can you see the drone as we go around? Did you see the drone? Yes or no? 
Right, I'm going to go on the drone with Nomad now, and we're going to come back into this room with the scanner on and see if you can see the drone this time. There she is, right up in the top corner. If you saw it first time, I mean, it's fairly obvious once you know it's there. If you saw it first time, fair play. But you can see straight away, by having this active, you can see the drone immediately. If Nomad comes off that drone... Now, I know you know it's here now, so you're definitely going to see it as you come in the room. But how much easier is it to see that with that scanner on, obviously? Just make sure you're careful about being active on the drones or not. What a fun minigame, Andy. God, you're so fun. Okay, so where does Solis come into a roam as a roamer? Well, for me, it's right at the beginning of the round. You know people are getting drones set up in certain places, and as Solis, in my opinion, the first thing you should do is run straight to where you know the drones typically come in on a map. So for Villa, that's typically down at the front door. First thing you should do is just run straight down here, down to the front door, and see if any drones have come through the front door. Don't forget, don't use your scanner the whole time. The other side is where most of the drones come through in high relo, because the north side attack is far more common. And then you come to this side, and straight away, this is where a job's great. Ignore Nomad on the phone there, because Nomad won't be there in the prep phase. But this is where she comes into her own. I've hidden a couple of drones in trophy that I like to use when I'm attacking. You can see there's one there. There's no way you're noticing that drone as a defender as you come in here. You can't even see it. Never mind. Notice it. But there, you're never going to... If you want to get that drone up there, by the way, you just jump onto the deer, onto the deer's head here, and then jump up onto the lamp. It's a really, really good drone spot if you're attacking this side of the map. But as Solis, imagine that. You just run in and you go, oh, shit, there's a drone there. Oh, okay, let's get rid of that. And then you come around here. And away we go now into... Uh, into Astro, and you can see there's another drone up there. So straight away, I mean, we've talked about this loads, right? But the, the most powerful piece of utility that any attacker has is the drone, yeah? So being able to get rid of three, four, five drones in the prep phase just by running around like a maniac like this, and going, oh, drone, pop, oh, another drone, pop, and just get rid of it. She's so strong as a roamer. Then, if you're attacking, uh, sorry, if you're defending uh, Astro, uh, sorry, not Astro, Aviator, I always get Astro and Aviator mixed up. If you're now defending this side of the map, I'm going to have to just do a little bit of uh, moving around on the other keyboard and mouse here, so just bear with me. Um, I know this is boring to look at because Solus has just stood still, but I'm just moving the drone around on the other uh, on the other monitor. There we go, done. So, now when um, the attack starts, so prep phase is over. Again, ignore Nomad. Prep phase is over, and the attack starts happening, and you know the attack's coming north side. You're, gonna get, you're probably going to get someone in Astro Window. You're going to get drones coming through bathroom, through closets, and through master. Sit somewhere where you're protected, like this. You can see now there's a drone under the bed there. Get rid of that drone. Pop that drone. Run somewhere else. You know there's a drone on top of the lamp. You've already got rid of that. There's another drone you've just found. I can only use one drone at one time, but let's pretend you've seen another one coming through this drone hole. Get rid of that drone and then move. If you can get rid of like... For, so the start of every attack, you're going to have like three drones or two drones coming through this area. If you can get rid of the prep phase drones and then you can get rid of the support players drones at the start of the round... You're on to a winner. Like, you cannot go wrong. It's so, 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 so strong. As a Roma, she's absolutely unbelievable. So don't forget being able to scan every active gadget. You just saw a claymore there. That's what I'm going to show you now. Solus is also great at runouts whilst roaming. You can see, you can, before you'd make any run out, you can make sure that you can, like, make sure there's no air jab outside or claymore. You can see the claymore there. You can jump out and shoot it if you're absolutely off your head, or you can choose to just ignore the run out. She's also great on the flank as well. Now, I'm just going to have to jump down here and show you that you can see the one that was top of Astro stairs just there. We're coming up Astro stairs. If you're worried about the usual flank spots where there's going to be an air jab, and there's going to be a claymore. Again, just use the scan on your way up. You can see the claymore's there. Never step in front of the lasers. This is going to be close. Get rid of the claymore and away you go. Now, you can... There is a small delay on claymores when you jump out. Jump out. And if you're any good at the game, you can shoot the claymore before um, you jump out. Now, what I would do if I was going to shoot the claymore, I would probably red ping it and then try and shoot it on the way out. Now, I'm going to try now. And I'm not going to delete this footage, so if this doesn't go well, I'm going to embarrass myself. Oh, there's the claymore, would you look? Oh, and then you've succeeded in the run out. The thing is with claymores as well, is people just forget about angles once they put a claymore on there. So don't forget, where this is going to be good is, you know, the chalet library run out? It gets claymored all the time. Uh, garage on clubhouse gets claymored all the time. Being able to see claymores and air jabs on the flank makes it... She's so dangerous when like doing run outs and, uh, and on the flank. Okay, so we've talked about Roman Solis. Now we've just jumped over to Clubhouse. Let's talk about Anchor Solis. Now, Anchor Solis is sort of primarily here to be able to see the diffuser and to see gadgets that are on site, primarily thermite charges and other hard breach devices. So, as you can see here, we've got the wall reinforced thermites on the other side. If we go through the drone hole and we move over here, go on, thermite, say hello. There he is. Thermite's outside. And we're going to get the thermite charge out and we're going to be on the scanner and I'll show you what it looks like. So at the minute, 
Thermite's got no Thermite charge in his hand. I've just pressed the charge button, and now Thermite's got it in his hand. He's not put it on the wall yet, he's just got it on his hand outside. If we go on the cam, you probably should be able to see that, actually. Uh, where's the... There we go. You can see Thermite's there, just with the charge in his hand. He's not anywhere near the wall yet, but why this is good is because you, when you're playing as uh, Solis, sorry for standing still, by the way, I'm using the other keyboard on the other PC, and that's why I have to keep flitting between the, the different mouse and keyboard. But if you're playing Anchor Solis and you're stood here, watch for the window, obviously, but if you're stood here, oh, what, have we shot the, yeah, we've shot the radio, panic over. If you're stood here and uh, Thermite's outside, you can talk to your bandit and you can tell him which side of the wall he's going to. So Thermite's going to this side, or if Thermite's going to this side, you can see where that thermite charge is going each side. You can just talk to him, right, right side. No, he's gone left side, right side. And you can literally, you can bandit trick the, yeah, sorry, you can bandit trick thermite trying to thermite trick the bandit. Does that make any sense? I think so. But you can see which side it's going down. It's really easy to see. Okay, so let's just say the next scenario here. We haven't been successful in bandit tricking. Thermite's got the wall open. I just want to show you how she interacts with the diffuser. Now, thermite is carrying the diffuser. That doesn't come up on Solus's scanner because the diffuser isn't active. The diffuser is only counted as active once the diffuser is dropped, and then you can see it, or when the diffuser is getting planted. Now, this is going to be difficult to do, but if I pick up the uh, diffuser with thermite, and we run in and we start planting, let's just move back with Solis. Just to show you again, the diffuser is not active. As soon as we start planting, um, I can't plant the diffuser. Oh, I know why I can't plant the diffuser, Andy. You absolute muppet, because this isn't the site. <laughs> Yeah, let's make a video and show people how to plant the diffuser. Probably best go into the main site. Right, let me just thermite run in. Talk amongst yourselves. Play the Benny Hill music in the background here, please, while we, when we edit the video. Right, we're going to start planting here. And as we start planting, you'll see when the diffuser becomes active. We're not planting, so diffuser's not active. Now we are planting, the diffuser becomes active. You come off the plant, and the diffuser is not active. If we drop it one more time, you'll see it becomes active. Pick it back up, it's not active. So if you can't see the diffuser, it's being carried by someone. If you can see the diffuser, it's either on the floor or being planted. But just to make a quick note of that, there's the icon that you see is exactly the same. So you see it's just a briefcase. And again, you see it's just a briefcase. So you don't know whether it's being planted or whether it's just cold on the floor. Obviously a bit of game sense and you'll know that. But that's another really good point where Anchor Solis is, is useful. Don't forget as well with that point, Roaming Solis can also be useful in that sense. If she's coming back to site late and she's like underneath... And you can see that the diffuser is about to go down and you've got your scan on and you're looking for where that's going to be. You can prevent it through the floor. You know, you see it going down there, you'd run underneath and shoot through the floor there. So, oh, don't forget, shoot the jukebox. I hate this thing so much. Like, why is that so obnoxiously loud? If anyone in the world has the like, ability to get rid of that, please do get... If I could get rid of one thing in Siege... I think it'd be this over anything else. Anyway, we digress. So yeah, even Rowan Solis coming back to site late can be useful at seeing it through the floor as well. Something I didn't mention just now, and I really want to mention it because I'll, it'll do me head in if I don't, is if you are using Solis through the floor, whether you're going above, uh, sorry, whether you're shooting from below or you're shooting from above, if you if you, the object that you're shooting at is stationary, so let's just say we've got Thatcher here on his phone, or Thatcher here is going to start planting, you can see the briefcase going down. If I were you, I wouldn't, I wouldn't see that and then come off that and then start shooting. I think it's far... This is where using your red ping is really going to come in useful. If you come off this, use the scanner, that red ping is going to be there whilst your gun's out and you've got an exact target that you can shoot at. If you don't use that red ping, you're sort of going to have to have a guess at where the icon was before you got rid of it. So that's when using your red ping is useful. So let's talk counters for Solace then. And there's only really three you need to worry about. Well, there are only three. You've got the boy outside here, Thatcher. You've got IQ, and you've got anyone with EMP grenades. Thatcher's probably the main one along with IQ. So, the main thing to worry about with Thatcher, and the reason why he's a counter on two for two different points, is you know when I told you that if anyone's gadget becomes active, it shows up on the scanner? Well, yeah, that's true, except Thatcher. If Thatcher holds an EMP, see that EMP looks active now? Well, you still can't see it on the scanner. So, you've got to be extra careful if Thatcher's not banned. It's the same with the EMP grenades as well. When the operator holds the EMP grenade before throwing it, you can't see it on the scanner. Now, why you have to be careful with Thatcher is because if you're helping the bandit bandit trick this wall and you're stood here and you're trying to see which way the thermite's going, the range of an EMP grenade from Thatcher is 5 meters. The range of an EMP grenade from any other operator is 1.5. So, the, the other, any other operator, you're kind of safe sort of being more than 1.5 meters away from the wall. However, with Thatcher, he's going to throw his grenade, uh, EMP grenade right at the bottom of the wall here. That's got a 5 meter range. You, you need to make sure you're more than 5 meters away from this wall. 
However, don't forget, you've got a 15 meter range, so you're well, you can well stand here and easily give the bandit the instructions from here as well. So, what it happens if you're on your scanner and Thatcher throws an EMP grenade? Let's just throw that down on the floor outside. You can see what happens. You instantly come off your uh, off your scanner, and down in the bottom left there, you can see that the EMP timer is on its way down. It's exactly like where your sights. This I hate this, by the way. If, when you're like getting pushed and you've got no sight on your gun, it's the worst feeling. It's horrible. Um, but yeah, once that's gone, it also stops the cooldown from um, from from regenerating, and then you can go again once that's gone. So Thatcher is a counter, um, and but, but remember, I don't think he's a great counter personally because as long as you're more than five meters away, you, you you're in a safe place. Now what will happen in higher elo, I suspect, and I don't think you're probably going to get a solace helping bandit in higher elo. But if you did, the thing you could do is just go above here, go up on the roof. And you know then you've got the fight. If you know where Solus is standing, like if Solus is standing here, trying to help the bandit on the wall, you can just go on the roof and you can EMP above here, which will work as well. But just something else. This is what the beauty of Siege is, isn't it? Pretty much everything you can counter it. Pretty much everything except Maverick. Um, that skin, by the way, is mad, isn't it? Like, what is that? <laughs> it's so weird. Anyway, let's show you the IQ counter. Thank you, Thatcher. Hey, so we've got IQ outside now. Hey, IQ. Let's show you the difference here. So IQ is on his scanner now. As you can see there, IQ doesn't have a timer on a scanner. She can stand it as much as she wants. I don't think that's very fair, but whatever. So as you can see there, if we can't see through the wall, this is what IQ looks like. Not a massively easy target, because you can see that IQ's frame is a lot smaller than what that looks like further away. If you can imagine that IQ actually is only sort of that big. So you've just got to remember the scanner is the exact center of the of the icon that's showing you there. So... Now, from, I, from IQ's perspective, she can only see a very, very small scanner when you're looking at Solus. It looks tiny. I don't know if you've ever seen uh, when you're looking at a Pulse's IQ. You can only see Pulse's scanner. You don't get an icon as big as this. Like, she definitely has an, uh, Solus definitely has an advantage over IQ at seeing each other. However, IQ can see you through fours as well. Just be careful with that. And obviously, you can finger if you want to. Scan that. Know where it is. Good night, Vienna. So there we have it, there's Solis, the new operator for Year 7 Season 4. I think she's absolutely class. There's people out there calling for a nerf. I think she's really good. There's ways to counter it. You know, you can take EMPs, you can take IQ. You can not take your drone into the building on the prep phase and just be a little bit more careful about droning. There's definitely ways to counter it, but she is strong. And it's great to have an operator in a season who's strong after we've had Grim and Sense. So people who are a little bit underwhelming, Solis is class. For those of you that don't know, I also stream on Twitch three days a week, every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Used to be four days a week. I've dropped Tuesdays at the minute because IRL work is absolutely crazy. So I've just got to spend a bit more time doing that. But definitely Monday, Wednesday, Friday. We might get Tuesdays back in the rotor at some point. My name on Twitch, if you want to follow me on there, which I'd really appreciate, is exactly the same as it is on YouTube. You can see it below. Other than that, that sums us up for another one. And I'll see you next time. Cheers!